Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question without notice this morning will go to the Minister for uh, Fisheries. But before me asking a question, let me start by commending the Marabe government and the minister for the recent launch of the NFA corporate plan. And I note with interest one of the major features of the plan is the intention to rev revive the marine park in Medeng, the PMIZ project, have it commercialized under NFA and build the processing facilities so we can finally process 100% of our catch in Papua New Guinea. Mr. Speaker, currently 70% of all our catch is taken offshore to countries like the Philippines where they are processed, the fish is processed, leaving us to lose 10,000 new jobs which we could have had. Philippines is now has now secured special market access to the European Union market, Mr. Speaker, which means they are now competing with Papua New Guinea, who have been enjoying the special market access through the interim partnership agreement we have with the European Union. So our fish is exported there free of duty. And that's re really the reason behind the growth of the industry in Papua New Guinea. So fish in Papua New Guinea caught in these waters by fisheries by canning companies from the Philippines are taken to the Philippines, canned under the Philippines brand and shipped to the European Union market as if it's Philippines fish, but it's fish from Papua New Guinea. We are losing 10,000 new jobs, even over 10,000. Mr. Speaker, currently, NFA raises about 500 million, which comes into the coffers of the national government through the fees that we mainly charge. This industry is worth over 1.2, 1.5 billion if we are able to process all the fish in our waters. So the Marabe government must be highly commended for this decision. My question to the minister is this. Number one, minister, can you give us a time frame on when you will start work? Is the funding been secured? When do we see some action? Because we all support that initiative. We want to see the marine park built with nine or two new canneries, and we have the processing capacity to process all our fish in Papua New Guinea. So our fish is not processed in Thailand and processed in Philippines and sent to the European market to compete with our own fish. And Big Blaswa, we're losing so many jobs, so much foreign currency inflow that needs to stop. It's one of the best decisions we support you. Please, can you tell the people of Papua New Guinea and this parliament, when is it going to happen under, under your new plan? Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Minister. Member for Yangur South here. Um, there's a very important question that uh, need to be answered on the floor of Parliament this morning. And I will take some time to set some background to the uh, questions being raised. I think I agree with him. Uh, in terms of the number of jobs being lost, I think. Uh, I'll just give you a picture. RD Tuna in Medang actually employs 13,000 people. That's just one cannery. Employs 13,000 of our people. So if we look at the PMIZ, the projected uh, number of people that would be employed in PMIZ if it comes into fruition is about 40,000 people. That's the number of new jobs we are looking at. He made mention that 70% of our, our fish are actually uh, taken overseas, which, I, which is correct. Currently, we are processing only 30% of the fish being caught in our waters. And of the 30% being caught in our waters, that equates to, in terms of the money being made, that equates to about 290, 292 million, 455 million US dollars. So if you look at that, that's about over 1.2 billion kina worth of money coming into this country, into the industries. In terms of the taxes, it's quite difficult for us to actually find out how much, how much of that is actually paid as taxes to the country because of our confidentiality clauses in our tax regimes. So it's quite difficult for me to get a figure out of IRC. I've been trying for a while. It's quite difficult for me to get that figure. 
in terms of the sea cucumber export, in good years, we probably export up, up to uh, 110 million kina. But last year's export ranges around 50 million, and that's money that's going directly to the pockets of ordinary Papua New Guineans. In terms of the time frame, Mr. Speaker, we are good to go. The only problem we have is funding. Funding is something that we can't really have to start off this good project. Because as leaders in this uh, house, we also have our local needs that seem to be pressing, having more space in the fiscal space, in the budgets, and it's quite difficult for us to actually build this transforming infrastructure. Let me give, give you an idea of what we are losing out on. Thailand, a country that has no tuna at all, is now the world tuna capital. Now, how is that possible? Because some smart leaders 30 years ago decided to invest in capital investments. They put in the enabling infrastructure, so it's quite easy, it's, it's quite cheap to do business in process one metric ton of tuna in Thailand and in this country. So in order to en encourage in industries to be established here, through the former government, they've introduced a good thing, which is called a production rebate. So we pay the price difference in processing one metric ton of tuna. And that equates the price difference between us doing business here in Thailand, which is the gold standard. And that equates to about 120 million of kina every year that is being given free to the industries. That is the reason why we have to build PMIZ. PMIZ is very important because what PMIZ will do, PMIZ is basically a special economic zone for fisheries. What it does is that it provides all the infrastructure necessary to cut down the cost of utilities so that we can compete with places like Thailand who has no fish at all. At all. This country has 37% of the world's tuna. Together with our neighboring countries, including Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, the other uh, neighboring uh, Pacific Islands, we have about 67% of the world's tuna. Now, if we can bring all that tuna into our canneries here, into a special economic zone and do that business here, we are looking at generating over two billion every year in terms of direct, direct revenue coming into this country, not taxes. So that is the reason why PMIZ is an important program, project that needs to go off the ground as, as soon as possible. Now, there are varying opinions from our other development partners like World Bank who says that in the next few years, our fish will migrate towards the eastern part of the globe. And that means we will no longer have the resource to run our PMIZ. But we have to understand that if we have the enabling infrastructures in this country, if we have those factories here that can compete with places like Thailand, we can still go out there and do the fishing. Because the fish will still be in the Pacific waters in our smaller Pacific Island countries. Now, in 1995, the PNA group of countries, which actually cont control more than 80% of the world's tuna, came up with a policy called a tuna domestication policy. In that policy, because countries like Marshall Islands, which is so small, other countries in the nine countries in the Pacific Islands, which are quite small, they can't have that capacity to build infrastructure. So, basically, tuna domestication policy is a policy that this country needs to, you know, go into. And what that means is that PMIZ, when it comes on board, these smaller countries can be given an opportunity to come and have their processing centers here. And that means we will control up to 80% of the world's tuna, making us essentially the world tuna capital. So that was, in a sense, the plan that we launched, my senior leader. What it needs now is resource to finance that, uh, that program. We can no longer, when gas runs out, when gold runs out, when all the extractive industry runs out, we have to look at the long-term generating opportunity for this country. And fisheries is one of them. Fisheries will never run out. We will still have fish in our oceans. Now, any smart government will, will invest in that space. So PMIZ is there. 
from initial feasibility studies being done, actually is one of the highly bastardized uh, programs in our government, going from one department to another to another with nothing on ground. We have drawn down on 195 million uh, US uh, dollar loan that the country is paying, and there's nothing to show in Medang. Medang was chosen because beach, the beach mark area is the area where a lot of the fishing happens in terms of tuna. So that is the space that we want to go into now. And I thank the good leader. NFA has launched a 10-year development plan, the strategic plan, and we have already done feasibility studies. We are ready to go. We need funding. We need funding, huh? Over the time, you may make him road and can can project where you may can benefit now, but not at him direct return on investment, huh? It's about time we have to make some, you know, strong decisions. As a government, we have to make some strong decisions and invest in this space. Because once tuna runs out, it is the coastal fisheries that will come on board. Things like sea cucumber, we can't even feed the entire country of China. We'll probably feed maybe 1,000 of its population if, we, if the whole country goes into sea cucumber. Now, we can't do those things. We have to build up on our strength. Our strength right now is tuna. We have abundance of tuna. Let's use revenue that's coming from tuna. Let's invest in those, um, those infrastructure that are necessary. There was a good decision made by the previous government of creating an infrastructure uh, fund. Uh, honorable member, we have a point of order, Honorable Minister. What's your point of order, member for about? Mr. Speaker, I think we are all convinced about the importance of this important plan that the government launched with a lot of fanfare. But the question is, the simple question that the member asked was, when is it going to start? And he has admitted that his government is not providing the funding. So I think that's the answer. There's no need to keep going. Thank you. Honorable uh, uh, member of Law about point of order of you, I mean, in order. And Minister Wolong, uh, answer him all question. Now, some like talk talk, he passed law that, that members very clear along and so on. Well, Minister, you continue with. Thank you. Let me, let me finish now. Thank you. Thank you for uh, cautioning me. Um, we are on this floor of parliament and we are all fighting for a space in the budget. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you, after the budget is passed, will look into it to see if your projects are actually reflected. And we are not even talking about how we generate that revenue. Huh? I think it's an important thing. Yeah? Some of the time you may must, a lot of more important something, you may talk talk now, you may discuss here. Anyway, PM has given the assurance that we will start it next year. Uh, NFA is actually, from its internal revenue, has put aside some money to actually start the feasibility start, uh, studies and do designs. So let me thank uh, the Marape government for giving us this opportunity for actually giving me this opportunity to lead a sector which I have no experience in. But I think it's an exciting sector that needs to grow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.